Happy Wednesday, everybody. It's Wednesday, the middle of the week. And today we're going to spend a few minutes with strategies each side is using in the Civil War. Yesterday, you learned how the war started at Fort Sumter. Fort Sumter is in Charleston, South Carolina. It's a place where uh, the Civil War began with the first shooting between Union and Confederate forces. We learned yesterday that this was not really a fair fight in that the Union or American United States soldiers inside Fort Sumter really had never had a chance. They were asked by President Lincoln to be the target to get the war started. Southerners um, fired first. They, um, about 48 hours or so of shooting takes place. No one, ironically, is killed during all that shelling except for one Confederate horse. If I had been in class with you, um, you would have, somebody would have had the special job of being the Confederate horse. Well, today we're now going to look at the strategies each side is going to use. Now that the war is on, how are they going to try to go about winning it? The United States, or the Union, uh, has a clever name for their plan. It's called the Anaconda Plan. This is an anaconda snake. An anaconda can be 22 feet long. It can be very thick. 22 feet would reach almost the entire way from the window wall across the room to the black shelves. Um, they often, or they, they are a constrictor kind of snake. So they will wrap themselves around their prey and use its great strength to crush its prey to death. That's what the Union wants to do with the South. General Winfield Scott, who developed the plan, or at least most of it, um, saw the Union as an anaconda. It's, you could use its power and strength to destroy the South. We'll see that there are three parts of this anaconda plan, but first, the overall goal for the Union is to preserve the United States as one united nation. That's what they want to do. They want to keep the United States one country. Confederate states want to break off and form their own country, but the United States wants to remain a union. They believe that the ideals of our founding fathers, of freedom of speech and press and all those things are worth preserving even when it comes to war. How are they going to go about preserving the U.S. as one nation? Well, there are three parts of the plan. First part of the plan is capture Richmond, Virginia, the Confederate capital. For most of the war, Richmond is the capital of the Confederate States of America. Confederate President Jefferson Davis has his Confederate White House there, and they run the government from Richmond, Virginia. It's about 90 miles or so south of Washington, D.C., at the very earliest part of the war, the Confederates had their capital down in the farther in the south, but decided it was too far away from the main armies and the main war effort. And so they moved the capital to Richmond. The Union wants to capture Richmond. It is true in many wars that if you capture the enemy's capital, you have won the war. Well, that's what the Union is trying to do by capturing Richmond. Second thing. The United States wants to capture the Mississippi River from Illinois down to the Gulf of Mexico. This will divide the Confederate States of America with Texas, um, Arkansas, Louisiana on one side, the remaining eight Confederate States on the other. Divide and conquer is a common war strategy, and this is what the Union is trying to do by capturing the Mississippi River. This won't be an easy project because the Confederates own all the land from the southern tip of Illinois down through New Orleans and out to the Gulf of Mexico. And it'll take a lot of work and hard fighting to capture that part of the river. Third, the Confederates want to, or the Union, pardon me, wants to blockade all the southern port cities so that no supplies can get into the south. Everybody knows the disadvantages that the Confederates have in money and material and manufacturing and people. Um, everybody knows that they will try to get help from foreign countries. And so the Union believes if they can blockade all the southern port cities with their navy, the South won't be able to import any material or money or weapons from any other countries. This, again, is not an easy thing to do, especially because at the beginning of the Civil War, the navy is very, very small. Uh, we are almost, it's almost impossible to blockade the southern port cities. 
For the first two years of the war, the Union will really struggle with this number three objective, but eventually we'll figure out how to build ships fast enough, we'll be able to figure out how to blockade southern ports, and we will get much better at it in the second half of the war. You might notice one important issue is not listed as a goal above. You'll notice the slavery issue is not here at all. At the beginning of the war, um, the Union's plan, their, their main goal was to preserve the United States uh, as a united nation. No official word about slavery in their uh, goals. I believe that's because you didn't have to tell people the war was about slavery. Back in the 1860s, everybody knew the war was about slavery. So you could leave that part out. You wouldn't offend states like Kentucky and Missouri and Maryland and Delaware, those border states that allow slavery but stay in the Union. And you might keep them on your side if you don't officially make the war about slavery. President Lincoln himself said uh, that he needed to have Kentucky in the Union. In fact, his famous quote is, I'd like to have God on my side, but I must have Kentucky. So Kentucky was a pretty important place in President Lincoln's mind, maybe even more important than God. Let's move on to the Confederacy's diplomatic plan. The South has a lot of disadvantages, and they see themselves very much like the Americans in the American Revolution. They don't have the manufacturing, the money, the people, and all that sort of thing, just like the Americans didn't have those advantages in the Revolution back in the 1770s. The Confederates' overall plan is to become an independent country, called the Confederate States of America. They don't want to be the United States of America anymore. They want those 11 states to withdraw from the U.S. and form a different country. They believe they voluntarily joined the United States by ratifying the Constitution, and now they can voluntarily leave. Uh, the Union argues that, no, you can't voluntarily leave. There is nothing in our Constitution that allows a state to withdraw from the Union. More or less, the Confederates are saying, well, then make us stay. And that's what the Civil War is going to be about, the North making the South stay, preventing the South from becoming an independent country. How will the South try to be an independent country? Well, they have an advantage in that, well, if the North doesn't do anything at all, the Confederates win. And so what the Confederates want to do is defend the Confederacy from a Union invasion. It's much easier to defend than attack. The Confederates don't have to go into the North. They don't have to go attack anyone. They don't have to go on the offensive. All they have to do is stay in their own country and defend. That's a big advantage uh, in those days when the damage of war is very different than it would be today in the 2016. So they just want to defend the Confederacy, uh, pick a good position, and let the enemy come attack you. That helps you. And certainly, the Confederates want to get help from a European nation. Just like the Americans in the American Revolution, the Union, or excuse me, the Confederacy wants to get help from France or England. Uh, France has its reasons why it might like to take shots at the United States. Do you remember the um, Louisiana Purchase? The Louisiana Purchase was an incredible real estate deal, uh, and the French might believe if they join the Confederates and win the war, they might get some of that land back. The British certainly would like to um, take shots at the United States. England has lost the American Revolution. They've lost the War of 1812. Uh, they've lost the Oregon Territory in the 54, 40, or fight situation. If England joins the Confederacy, maybe they can gain some of that land back. And certainly, England badly needs Confederate cotton. Southern cotton fuels the textile mills of England, and the textile mills of England fuel England's economy. So it would be a good idea for England to very strongly consider becoming a friend of the Confederates and helping them out. These strategies uh, that the two sides are going to use are going to be their plan for how to win the war. And the, um, the Confederates will work on making friends with foreign nations. The Union is going to use its strength and power to crush the South. This, again, will not be an easy, simple war. At first, Many people think it'll be, you know, a couple of months, 90 days. Um, won't be too many big battles and it'll all be over. 
either side starts out with a lot of respect for the other. They will eventually find that each side really intends to fight and it's going to wind up being a very deadly, very ugly four-year-long war.